Welcome to today's program. Friends, you're going to be blessed. We have back with us Isaac. Isaac has been on here many times before, and he just blesses everybody so much. The anointing of the Lord is on him and flows through him in such a miraculous way. Uh, hopefully you've heard some of Isaac Prater's messages that he has given on the program over time, but if you have it, you're fixing to to hear one now, and for those of you that have, let, I ask you to keep him in prayer because God's got not only anointing on him but a big work for him to do, and he needs our prayers, the prayers of the body, to hold him up, to help support him, and I know that you want to do what you can, so just ask God what he'd have you do. You can always pray. So, Isaac, welcome back to, the, to an overcoming life. We're Thank so you so glad much. to have you. So good to be here with you. Um, I know that you have been having a lot of signs and wonders and miracles that took place in the meetings that you have been he holding. Everybody loves to hear about that, including me. So oh, yeah, we always tell, us, tell us something about <laughs> where it was. Was it just one place? Was it several? Oh, we go everywhere that we go. The Lord heals people and sets people free, touches people, and, and uh, He's still the same. That's right. Uh, but we depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus said, if you love me, Keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So Jesus, after he died on the cross, he was seen of many people after raising from the dead and he ascended to the right hand of the father and he's seated there today but he sent back the holy spirit to be with us amen and so uh, within the holy spirit are not only the fruit of the spirit love and joy and and peace and meekness and temperance and faith and and all of those wonderful attributes but also the, he has gifts, praise God. And so the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the whole church. That's for every member of the body of Christ. A lot of times people mistake and they say, well, you see miracles because you're an evangelist, or you see miracles because you're a pastor, or you see miracles because you're a, an apostle or a teacher or whatever uh, somebody, uh, somebody's office might be. And so people f wrongly think that it's just because certain people have been called to certain offices and so they can see miracles. And of course, everyone in the body of Christ uh, can see miracles, but it's not just for some, it's for all. So we're living in the day where the Lord is wanting to manifest His glory in this earth. Praise God. So all that I do when I go and minister to people is believe the Word of God. It's that simple. Many times I don't even pray for people wow. to be healed. I just command something to happen in the name of Jesus. And uh, for instance, say if someone comes to you and they're in intense pain in their body and you're ministering to them and you say, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the pain that is in your body right now, and I command this pain to leave now in Jesus' name. Yes. Now, just two seconds ago, they were in terrible pain. They came up for ministry because they were in such pain. But all of a sudden, when they go to find the pain, their so face they, lights up. They say, the pain's gone. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> Praise God. And so this is the authority that has been vested in every believer in Jesus Christ. Back in June, I was 
in Kentucky preaching a revival and a, a precious pastor's husband. She's the she's a pastor. Uh, her husband came to the meeting where I was having a healing service. He had been in excruciating pain since 1987. Oh wow. I was eight years old when his pain began. I'm 42 now. Wow. His pain was in his back. Mm -hmm. Many days he could do nothing but lay in the bed. It hindered him from life. It hindered him from everything that he wanted to do. So he came for prayer, his wife dragging him because he'd been prayed for so many times that he was, he was doubtful yeah, probably. Yeah, probably giving up hope. Yeah. 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 But she convinced him after hearing some of the other people that were being healed in the meetings to come. And so I prayed for him, ministered to him, and commanded every bit of the pain to go. He began to move around. But he was still yeah. apprehensive yeah. Yeah. to truly embrace that the Lord had done a miracle, even though he realized that the pain was much less hmm. than it had been. But see, this is something that we've got to realize. Sometimes when the Lord uh, begins a work in somebody's body, it won't all take place at one time. Sometimes it's a gradual thing. Sometimes it's an instant miracle. And so he was much better. And uh, so uh, I told him, I said, believe God. Believe God that it's done. So he, he did that. And so I kept hearing back from his wife. I would check on him. And she would tell me, he's getting better. He's getting better every day. He's getting better and better. So she invited me to come back to Kentucky in July and preach a revival. He came to the meeting and stood up and testified <laughs> that he was 100% better. Yeah. Now, this was all the way from 1987 till mm, few months ago. July 2021. Wow. Mm. She said, he's been doing so much now, she can't keep up with him. <laughs> he always told her, you're too fast, I can't keep up with you. Now, she can't keep up with him. And he's working so hard about to wear himself out because he's able to do the things that he had not been able to do in all of those decades. Mm. And the Lord did a miracle, praise God, in his body. Mm. And it's such a wonderful thing to see these things. But it's not something, it's not something that should be uncommon or mm. strange. These should be normal activities of every believer to minister to hurting and sick people. But this is the thing that I find. So many believers are not depending upon the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yeah. They're depending on their abilities or their disabilities. Mm. See, God moves even with all my disabilities. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He moves He moves despite me. <laughs> yeah. Just because His Word mm -hmm. is on the line. Amen. His Word is settled in heaven. And He said this, If you believe, mm -hmm. you'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall okay. recover. Praise God. Let me ask you a few questions for the sake of some of the viewers out there. <clears throat> uh, if someone has a condition and they've suffered with it for a while and they have had prayer from several people, like uh, this man that you was telling me about probably had, but they haven't seen the manifestation. Uh, if you could sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and talk to them, and tell them? What would you tell them? I would tell them, quit agreeing with the devil. Mm. See, because people come many times to healing lines, and they say, yes, I believe. 
But then when they're in their living room mm -hmm. and the devil begins to speak to them and cause them to doubt, then they agree with what he says and they begin to claim what he is putting upon them. Instead of saying, listen, I am the healed of the Lord. I am the one, say the one, the one, that Jesus took 39 stripes upon his back for. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So this is my portion. My portion is not sickness. My portion is not pain. My portion is not weakness. You know, I can just hear, some, uh, hear a lady right now as she's watching. She's, she, this is the thoughts that's coming to her. Well, Brother Isaac, if that's true, why doesn't things change for me? I believe in God. I believe that He is a healer. And I see Him healing others. Is it because of the life I've lived that I can't seem to receive my healing? What, what's, why I mean? The Bible says that the violent take it by force. Amen. Mm -hmm. The violent take it by force. I'm not a healer. If I could, I'd go and heal everybody. Praise Amen. God. But see, what we got to realize is that um, there's people that don't get healed that love God. Mm -hmm. There's people that, that, will, that go through uh, sicknesses and they never get it. But this is one thing I know. It is the will of God mm -hmm. that everybody gets it. See, and so whatever it is that we need to do to draw near to the Lord, if all that we can do is lift up one finger, we need to lift it up. Amen. If we're so weak, because this is what the Bible says, He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I, I remember uh, hearing the story of a, um, a man named Brother Yun. He has a book, if you can get it, it, it bless you. It's called The Heavenly Man. And uh, he was a greatly persecuted Christian in China. But he tells the story of how his mother was a brand new believer. Okay. And um, she hardly knew any of the Bible. She just had a few scriptures. That's all that she knew of the Word of God and what she had heard a preacher preach. So her husband, which was also the father of Brother Yun and, and other children, was sick with terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. He was given up by the doctors to die, sent home to die. Mm -hmm. All this woman knew was that Jesus was a healer because the same one that preached to her that Jesus saves, also told her that Jesus heals. Okay. So she didn't know any great methods. She didn't know any eloquent prayers to pray. She, she didn't have a great theology. But she was smart enough to get her children around their daddy. Mm -hmm. And she joined them. And she told them, that Jesus heals. And they all began to lay hands on the daddy and say, Jesus, heal daddy. Jesus, heal daddy. Jesus, heal daddy. Jesus, heal daddy. They prayed that same prayer all night long through the early morning hours. And all of a sudden, Jesus came in the power of the Holy Spirit and filled the room and the power of God came upon their daddy and completely healed him of cancer. Every cancer cell in his body disappeared and he lived many years and became a believer. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Truly all things are possible, aren't they? Yes, and it was the faith Simple of a little faith. child. Simple faith, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Uncluttered. So whatever you can do, this is the best that I can tell you. Whatever you can do to show God that you are believing Him to do what you can't do, do it. Amen. Amen. And friends, would you like Brother Isaac to pray for you? 
If you will just email us your prayer request, we will get it to Brother Isaac, and he will pray. And he will, even if he has time, he's a busy man, but I bet he'll answer you back if he has I sure would. I possible. surely will. Has the time, but you can at least ask him to pray for you and tell him the situation. Our email address is overcomers at centurylink.net. Overcomers at centurylink.net. Um, there was a there was another man I'm thinking of in in Kentucky. He came with a bad hip problem. He was dragging his foot part of the time when he would walk. He was in terrible pain, an elderly man. I prayed for him, and the power of God touched him. And he sent me a message two days later. And uh, his wife did, I believe, mm -hmm. and said that fire had been burning in his hip ever wow. since he received <laughs> prayer. The fire of the Holy Lord. Spirit had been burning Lord. in his hip. Oh, and then she sent me another message some days after saying it was gone and all the pain was gone too and the Lord had healed his hip. Beautiful. Now I want to tell you another story. See, I pray for the sick, right. <laughs> but I still go through struggles myself sometimes. Can I just be transparent? Yes, yes, yes. And so I was praying for the sick one night. The Lord was slaying people under the power of the Spirit. People were getting healed. This was just recently in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And I went home actually to the church where I was staying in the back of the church and I went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I stood up to my feet and I was in terrible pain all the way down through my body and through my leg all the way to my feet. I tried to walk it off, pray it off, praise it off, everything I could do, and it was still there. Can you believe it? And uh, so, how many know some things are stubborn? Yeah. You know, okay. and so all day long, all the way up to the night service, I was just in terrible pain. I was there in the service. I was praying for people. The Lord was healing people, but I could hardly stand up. But I didn't want nobody to know because then I thought it would hinder their faith. Right. So I was trying to conceal it, but it was hurting me. Mm. So I got finished with that service, went back to the place where I was staying, went to bed, hoping, praying, that the next morning the pain would be gone. Mm -hmm. I woke up early in the morning, began to pray and read my Bible, and stood up and realized the pain was still there. Mm -hmm. The night before, in the service the night before when I was in such pain, a man had come who was in a terrible car accident. He was in terrible pain. His kneecaps had been removed. His mm -hmm. His ankle had had surgery where they put surgical parts and he couldn't move it around. He was in such pain. I had prayed for him the night before, but he was not healed. His grandmother contacted me on the phone that the next morning while I was praying, while I was reading the Bible, while I was still in so much pain, and she said, Rodney, that's his name, mm -hmm. Rodney's going back to Berea, Kentucky with his wife. Would you pray for him again before he goes? Mm -hmm. I was in pain myself. You know what I wanted to say? Tell him to go home. I'll pray for him <laughs> while he's driving home. I'll pray for him right here. But there's something in me, compassion, I guess you could call it, that would not allow me. It's Jesus to send him away, mm. even though I was in pain myself. Wow. So reluctantly, I said, just bring him over here and uh, I'll pray for him. So just in a few minutes, they came to the church. I was in the back in the evangelist mm -hmm. quarters, as they call it. Right. Brought him in and set him at a table. I sat down in front of him. I began to pray for him. 
I looked up, his face was still excruciating, in excruciating pain. You could just see yeah. the torment of this pain. No medicine that he could take was easing it. Mm. I kept praying. I said, more, Lord, more. God said more, and I would speak to the pain. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to leave. I command all damage to be healed right now in Jesus' name. I, I command, you know, and I was just speaking the word of God over his life. He got up, and some of the pain had left, but not all of it. He came and sat back down. I prayed for him again. He got up. I looked at him. And I saw what his grandmother was about to say before she said it. She said, look at his face. His face is glowing. His face looks different. The pain's gone. He started walking, sitting down, everything. All the pain had left him. Wow. The joy of the Lord came upon his face. Oh, wow. The Lord had healed, healed him. And uh, I stood up. You know what happened? Your pain was gone too. My pain left and it hadn't come back since. While I was praying for somebody else, the Lord healed me completely. Hmm. And I believe if I had not have been sensitive to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and I told him, just tell him to go home and I'll, I'll pray for him, you know, in my casual way or whatever. Yeah. I would have, I might still have that problem yeah. today. Yeah. See, yeah. but when I reached out and allowed the compassion of the Lord to flow through me, the Lord not only did a miracle for him, which many days later he sent me a video testifying that he was completely healed. I've wow. sent, I sent it out. I don't know if you oh, saw yeah, it or I not. It on okay, yeah. so the Lord healed him. And at the same time, he healed me. See, this is a key mm -hmm. that we need to understand. So many people are hurting, they're sick, they're going through it themselves, and they say, who am I to help anybody else? I've got problems of my own. How can I be a vessel for God to use me? And it's when we forget about what we're going through and we just obey what the book says, mm -hmm. And we go out and we find some sick people. We find some people that are in pain and we say, listen, I'm a believer. Can I lay hands on you and pray for you? A lot of times it's at that point, even while we're suffering, that suddenly while we're focusing on somebody else, we'll realize that the problem that we were going through has disappeared. Yeah. Isn't there a scripture about praying you one for another? That yes, that you might be healed. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely, he he's also says, um, "He that waters others, he himself shall be watered also." And Jesus said this: "The measure that you mete out to others shall be measured unto you again." Yeah. And so I'll tell you another story. Some years ago, I was in India praying for the sick. Mm -hmm. A young lady came through the prayer line. She didn't ask for prayer for herself. She asked for prayer for somebody that. Uh, was in her life that she was concerned about. They were going through a problem. And she intended on asking also for prayer for herself because she had a big growth on her wrist. And um, so uh, she got prayer for her friend and went on. And all of a sudden she realized, oh no, I forgot to ask for prayer for the Lord to heal me of this growth on my wrist. <laughs> and she looked down and the growth had disappeared. This growth that had been there for a long time had suddenly disappeared when she went and prayed for her friend and forgot about her own situation. And she came back the next night and testified with pictures of the growth before and what the Lord had done afterwards. I still have it in one of my old files. And uh, so there's such a message here that if we will just do what the Lord tells us to do in his word, praise God, that we will see the gifts of the spirit manifest through our lives. And not only will they flow through us for other people, but they will work for us as well. Hallelujah. Yes. 
You know, let me ask you a question as you were sharing all that. Do you, it, it, I, do you think that if you pray for somebody, even that somebody, especially if they're already a believer, and you pray for them for healing, and you don't see the manifestation right then, there's a process that has started Absolutely. within them that once it's reached the maturity, that it will come forth. Absolutely. And this is another thing that I see, Sister Bobby. The devil is very aggressive. And he doesn't want to lose ground that he has gained. Right. So I tell a lot of people in the service, they might be healed. They might suddenly realize their pain is gone or a growth has disappeared or a blind eye has opened or a deaf ear has, has popped open. And I tell them, don't think that the enemy is not going to come back and try you again. Mm -hmm. Many times I feel led to tell certain people that don't think he's not going to try to come back and bring the same symptoms again. But this is what I've discovered. I say when he tries to come back immediately, don't wait five seconds. Immediately say, devil, the Lord healed me. I'm healed. And you have to go from me right now in Jesus name. That's sure. simple. And he will go when he realizes that you have become a believer yourself, not just depending on what somebody else believes for you, but you take it upon yourself to believe the Word of God for yourself. And over and over again, I've had people come back and say, hey, after I was healed in that service, the enemy tried to come back. But as soon as I rebuked him like you told me to and told him to go, I'm the healed of the Lord, he left and he hadn't come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So Gee, it's, about again, it's about authority again. It's about the authority of the believer. You have authority. Yes, sir. Start using it. Amen. You said the violent take it by force. People you suffer with get, things for many years simply that. because they never use the authority that Jesus has already given to us. Yeah. And yeah. it's not just authority to pastors or evangelists. No, angels. to every believer. To every believer. Should have it. To should every, every child of wow. God. We should be doing this, yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Well, I do wish we had more time. <laughs> that clock just goes too fast. When yeah. we have oh, these teachings are so important. Are. We they need are. these brought, teachings. Brought yeah. They are. Thank you. What a wonderful so, word. So Thank you, Brother Isaac. And when you get back from Kenya, he's fixing to go on another trip to Kenya. When you get back, we want to have you back yeah. on the program. I look forward to it. And God bless you and you as well. Thank you. I love you so much. This is Bobby Frank. And Brother Isaac saying God loves you. Yes, you. And so do we. Amen. <laughs>